Friends, risk management is not always given the same focus in project using the Agile Scrum framework as it is in the traditional waterfall projects. Smaller Agile projects can effectively manage risk through the short iteration cycle that are part of two to four week sprints. Larger, more complex Agile projects require some type of formal risk management. Risks that are not addressed could lead to a reduction in the return on investment outlined during the sprint planning meeting due to lost velocity, delay in delivery of critical sprint features, and increased cost. In 2004, John Brothers addressed this through the creation of a risk burndown chart. Friends, don't skip any part of the video and watch till end to understand it completely. Hello friends, my name is Suran Sharma. I am based in beautiful city of Den Haag, Netherlands and welcome to our YouTube channel Career Stock. I am an agile consultant and if you are visiting our channel Career Stock first time, please subscribe to our channel for more similar videos in future. And friends, at the end of the video, if you like my efforts, please hit like. Your one like is a big motivation for me. So friends, let's start with agile risk management. Let's see what is risk. So risk is something that may occur and cause unexpected or unanticipated outcomes to your project. Whether your project is a big or a small, there are bound to be some risk involved. A key part of effective agile project management is to reorganize that possible risk and determine how those risks could affect the completion of project. This can be positive, that can be an opportunity or negative threats, but Scrum Masters should know what they are and have a plan in place to mitigate or capitalize on these risks should they occur. Friends, I will just take a few more seconds to explain at least about opportunity or a positive risk. Although positive risks are something you are trying to avoid, they can often be managed as an opportunity when they occur. I'll just give you a simple example. So let's say your accountant points out the positive risk that if your income rises past a certain mark, that tax rule will apply that will reduce your net income. So how you are going to manage this risk? When your accountant tell you to reduce your income to avoid tax complications, you may be able to reduce your taxable income by donating to charity. In the agile management process, it is good idea to have a risk register. The risk register should be created during the first feature backlog discussion and updated frequently throughout more complex efforts as new risks are identified, accepted or mitigated. So this is a list of potential risks to project completion. The register should include a description of the risk, the date it was identified, the probability of the risk occurring, how severely the risk could impact the project, what action should take place, and the risk status. Is it open or closed? Once we have a risk register, we can create a risk burndown chart, which will show the ongoing level of risk and how the risk decreases over time until it is no longer a risk. So at every sprint meeting, the risk register should be reviewed and updated with any new information obtained over the sprint. This way, risk management becomes an integral part of Agile. The risk register shows us the detail for one potential risk to a software development project. This is great, but what if we need is a way to show all the risk in relation to each other. Using the risk register, we can create a risk burndown table that will eventually use to create a risk burndown chart. We'll discuss all this in detail in upcoming slides. You can see the exposure is nothing but the probability into size of loss or the impact. So the risks are collated into a table similar to a risk register which we have seen in the previous slide and it has risk, obviously the description of the risk in a few lines, probability, the likelihood of the risk, size of loss, amount of time lost should the risk occur. This could be represented in the days or story points, exposure, 
This is compounded as a product of the probability and size of loss. So what is probability? A percentage of probability is estimated. The probability is the likelihood that the risk will occur. Probability matrix can be categorized to provide consistency among a team. So below you can see is an example. Low probability items we can categorize as 1 to 40 percent, medium probability items 50 to 70 percent and high probability items that is 70 to 100 percent. So it is an important to get an agreement among key scrum team members and stakeholders on the probability matrices. As a next step, each risk is assigned an anticipated number of days that the risk would negatively affect delivery of a feature. If a feature does not have well-defined user stories and it has been accepted into the next sprint, then there could be a risk of delay in the number of days that it will take to deliver the features. Once each risk has a size of loss metric estimated by the number of days, that number is multiplied with the probability to determine the risk exposure in days. The risk register is re-evaluated at every sprint meetings. Its values are adjusted based on the current assessment of the existing and new risk. This would define a new value for the consolidated risk exposure. The risk burndown chart can be created by plotting the consolidated risk exposure across the number of sprints run by the team. An example is shown below. Scrum Master will hold a special 30 minute sprint review ceremony to do a deep dive into the open features and discuss with the larger team why they believe that the risk are compounding versus being reduced. So it could be a lack of the right tools, hardware, storage, software, not having access to the right people or overestimating velocity. It can be anything. So basically the Scrum Master is responsible for managing risk, register and burn down chart. So all team members have a responsibility to pause a project if the complexity and the number of risks increases significantly without explanation during the life of a project. So from a project management perspective, this is an excellent indicator of how the risks are managed and controlled. And of friends, similar to the other burn down charts, the ideal burn down would be a linear decrease of consolidated risk exposure over the sprints. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel and one like to motivate us. Stay tuned for more such videos. Have a nice day.